All right, well, I'm waiting for my gears to, uh, my gear to heat up and my differential to cool off, get a little colder. I'm going to drive this race in. Hope I won't mess it up. I'm going to, I'm going to end up actually doing, doing both these races, um, because I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be shimming behind. Well, take that back. I'm going to get this driven in and then we'll see what shims I've got before I drive in that next race. Race is in. Now I need to get that ring gear. I, make sure you, when you preheat the oven, make sure it comes to temperature first. You don't want to get too hot in there. And sometimes you might have like a, depending on how your oven heats, you might have a little bit of over, over temp. Had this guy in the freezer and just getting this guy out of the oven. clean these this actually moves pretty freely so that's good now I'm gonna put some Loctite on these guys but right now I just want to get them in I'll get them all started too Now my gear's already uh, cool enough to, for to touch. I put this on at 200 in the oven for about about 45 minutes or so, just while eating breakfast. All right, so now I need to set this up in the vise, pull these out one by one, get them all, get a little lock, uh, some thread lock on there, and then torque them down. I'm gonna get these snug. I'm not gonna actually take them to the 55 torque pound, foot pounds yet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark We'll get some kind of mark on each one of them, and then when I actually torque them, though, I'm going to put a mark on the actual, on the inside here. I can clean off later. Okay, I'll show you how the, this is my setup bearing. I got it just good enough to where it kind of, I'm easy. I can kind of start it in there. And I'll still have to drive it home just a little bit. That's pretty good. I didn't just do this with the belt sander. I was, I did several, <laughs> I lapped it several times with the, with the uh, little sander. But um, uh, at some point I actually decided to take it over to my, my grinding wheel I just went over it a couple times and then I just polished the OD and then uh, I just I finally kept working with it on the sander and now it uh, fits about the way I want it to fit it's it's tight I have to use a I do have to use a punch to get it out of there but that's about the right amount of force I want dealing with this thing so I think I decided I was just going to toss in like 17 thou on the pinion depth and then just kind of see where I'm at. And then uh, I guess I'm going to set up my case spreader or something like that. Just start checking backlash. 
and then once I feel like my back once my backlash is right then I can go from there so I was just getting to look at this setup, just seeing how many total shims I can use in general. And, <laughs> I mean, you can see in here, I mean, I at least got a, probably have an eighth inch to start out with. Of course, there's two master shims in there that are pretty thick. I haven't measured them up yet. I just wanted to kind of look, see where, how we were looking, uh, how hard this is gonna be. I think I might, Debating to set up like a table or something like that beside me so I can have work and adjust my shims and everything like that. But, uh, actually getting kind of excited. It looks like there could be progress one of these days. All right, I'm gonna start off 15 thou extra opinion depth than what I had last time or originally. There we go. I got that bad boy too loose. Oh well. All right, drop the master shims in here. Because I really, I don't have much of a clue of where my uh, backlash is just gonna end up being. Like how to shim for it. So, uh, like right in here is at least some backlash. Probably in there is actually probably closer to what we're looking for. I've got my pinion on a little too tight. Uh, I screwed up on that. But I can get it 24 on both sides. So I'm going to need quite a bit, uh, quite a bit more shim just to get any kind of case stretch or anything like that. Here's a 23 and 24, so here's 47 thou. See, and that just goes in there like, like just easy. Also, before, until I get uh, a little closer, I don't even have the O-rings in this air, how, this, this air part over here. So 69, don't even get close. When I had the 21, that's as far, that's until I actually start getting close. And I probably still got five or six, and that's before any preload. So we're looking at, let's see, 80. Look at 90 thou. So there's easily 10 thou, I mean 100 thou I need to add. Got no backlash. But I feel like I'm starting to get tight in the case. I've added, uh, let's see, 0 0.093 inches. I've got two 0.031 shims on this side. I've got one 0 0.031 shim on this side, including master shim, ARB master shim, and ARB master shim on each side. So, actually the way I had to do this, I'm, I'm guessing my, my preload's not bad, but uh, my backlash is. That's a that's a booger to get this stuff in here too, by the way. <laughs> Something else I haven't done, I have not notched out this because I don't I don't have my until I even get close, I'm not gonna notch out any uh, any shims. Now I've got my opinion too tight so I'm gonna back that off just a touch because if not I'm not really gonna be able to get a, a wear pattern I don't think That's 
that's doing better. Okay. Now this time, because I don't quite even know my preload, I was thinking maybe I'm hitting over here. I'm going to see if I can sneak in a 0 .031 on this side and a 0 .012 between my, uh, air, my air cylinder. So, and I'll loosen this up a bit so I can maybe actually check a gear pattern here in a little bit. So now I can't get that in there. So I'm gonna pull one of the point zero three ones out and try like a, a, two, a twenty. Okay, I wasn't able to get all that stuff in there, so I'm gonna try the case stretcher. Let me get it hand tight, and then I'm gonna set up. Mm. Darn it. I'd say it's good enough. All right, something still isn't right. I can't get these shims to go down and crinkled another shim. So I pulled it out. I don't know. In any case, I have no backlash, so it's not right. All right, attempt 20. <laughs> Stuff is just not going in there right, or at least how I want it, I should say. <clears throat> Mm. Mm. Oh. Mm. <laughs> My ring finger between the ring here and the piston. All right. Mm. No backlash. So we've got just a touch of back last year again. I'm not sure how much it is, and but we get these down and, and uh, we'll check. All right, we're actually getting kind of close. At least now we have about four thou backlash. I'm taking the tension off the case, but now I still have two and a half thou clear at the top here. So I'm thinking that. This case is kind of wedged out just a little bit, so I'm, I'm not really sure. I can't get it down, I can't get it in any further than that, than this top little bit. I'll show you. This feeler gauge, which makes me also want to put more shim in it. Actually, I can, but it does. Most, some places it, some of these places it binds up. But in some, one of these sections it can. So I don't know if this is like a, the way the case is machined or what. I don't know. Finally got my backlash again. <laughs> At the bottom of the spec, just, just a touch 
about five thou, but five to eight, that's spec. So I'm gonna check uh, the pattern.